happy day i am hari priya assistant professor in the department of food science mop vaishnav college for women in today's class we'll discuss the method of manufacture of condensed milk milk skim milk whey and any other milk products can be concentrated by removing a part of water from it and we can do it by the process of evaporation now let's look into the definition of condensed milk condensed milk is a milk product obtained by evaporating part of water of whole milk or skimmed milk with or without addition of sugar now when we add sugar we refer it to as sweetened condensed milk when we retort to the process of sterilization as a method of preservation we use a term evaporated milk Now looking into the food and nutritive value of condensed milk it is high in nutritive value rich in fat and fat soluble vitamins minerals and it is also high in sucrose since we uh, this process involves lot of heat treatment there is a considerable loss of vitamin b in it but the digestibility of the protein is good in case of evaporated milk looking into the uses the condensed milk can be used to enrich our coffee or tea and we can even dilute this condensed milk as a liquid milk and use it but the only problem is that the sugar content will be little higher and it is also used as an ingredient in the manufacture of sweets candies and also in chocolate making the codes requires a minimum of 8% milk fat and 28% total milk solids this is a highly concentrated product with 27% of water and the sugar ratio is around 62.5% which corresponds to 45% of sucrose in the total quantity now looking into the role of different milk constituents in making of our sweet and condensed milk the milk fat is responsible for the rich and pleasing flavor in our sweet and condensed milk the soft body and smooth texture is also by means of the milk fat and milk fat has a considerable impact on the viscosity of the product and it also plays a very significant role in the flavor problems now looking into the milk protein milk protein is technologically very very important for us in making of our sweet and condensed milk because it has an impact on the physical chemical properties of our sweet and condensed milk and it undergoes lot of changes during the heat treatment Now coming to the milk sugar milk sugar determines the texture of our sweet and condensed milk if we do not handle this ingredient carefully the finished product may have problems like sugar uh, sugar saltiness or sugar sediment in it now milk salts it controls the salt balance of our sweet and condensed milk and it is also indirectly responsible for the heat stability of our product now looking into the basic principle in making of our sweet and condensed milk a high quality milk is filtered clarified standardized it is preheated and then subjected to condensation or evaporation process now after this we have two choice one is addition of sugar as a preservation technique the other one is subjecting it to heat sterilization we have already discussed if we add sugar we refer the product as sweet and condensed milk and if we go for heat sterilization then we call the product as evaporated milk in today's class we'll talk about the manufacturing process of sweet and condensed milk here is a flow chart you can have a look into it the steps are as follows first is receiving milk in this process we grade we do the sampling then weighing and also the testing of milk then we do the filtration and clarification then moving on to standardization preheating then addition of sugar then the main process of evaporation then homogenization cooling and crystallization bottling and packaging so these are the steps which we are going to do in detail now let us move on to the selection of milk we need a really high quality grade 1 milk for making our sweet and condensed milk the milk should be fresh sweet and it should be free from any off flavors so usually we go in for a platform test or quality analysis of the milk before considering it for making sweet and condensed milk so what are the platform test we commonly do is that alcohol test alcohol index test and clot on boiling test 
Now let us see what is alcohol test. In alcohol test, we just take 5 ml of milk in your test tube, add alcohol, 68% alcohol, shake the mix and then we look in for any clot formation. If there is a clot formation, it indicates the test is positive and the milk is rejected for making of our sweetened condensed milk. Usually milk which is high in salts or which is high in acidity or if the milk is from a cow which has mastitis, in that case milk is rejected and it will fail in this uh, alcohol test. Now moving on to alcohol index test, the principle is similar to that of our alcohol test. An A index of 7 is considered to be good for your grade 1 milk. Now moving on to clot on boiling test, again here we take 5 ml of milk in your test tube and keep it in your boiling water bath and check for formation of any curd or precipitate. If we observe any curd like precipitate in the milk, then the milk is rejected because it indicates that the milk cannot withstand high heat treatment. Okay, now we'll move on to the pre-treatments which are important in making of our sweetened condensed milk. The three important pretreatments are filtration or we can even go for centrifugation. Then we have standardization and then preheating. Now all these pretreatments determine to a greater extent the physicochemical property of our final product and also the organoleptic characteristics. So they play a very important role even in determining the shelf life of a product. Now coming to filtration. Now the latest technique in filtration is back to catch method. Even while filtering the milk through ceramic filters, we can eliminate around 99% of the bacteria microflora in it. Bacillus series, which is a thermoduric bacteria, can, is, uh, can be considerably removed by using this back to catch filtration method. And milk which is filtered is known to have a pleasant flavor and off flavor is usually not felt in the milk which is filtered. Now moving on to centrifugation. This centrifugation process prior to our concentration, that is prior to our evaporation, improves the casein dispersion and heat stability of a product. Now the centrifugation process is now usually clubbed with bactofugation. In bactofugation, improved bacteriological quality is obtained because here bacteria and the spores are made to sediment out. So we have a better shelf life if we do filtration or centrifugation. Now moving to standardization. We all know that we have a particular legal standard for any milk product and we have seen the codex standard that we require 8% milk fat and 28% uh, milk solids. So we standardize our fat and SNF ratio. Usually it is 1 is to 2.44. So how do we standardize either by adding cream or skim milk to our milk and all of us know about the Pearson square calculation which we uh, do for deriving this fat and cream value. Moving on to the preheating of milk. Usually in evaporation, the first effect of evaporator has a temperature around uh, 40 to 100 degree. So preheating the milk to this temperature is important so that evaporation can start immediately and also this preheating has an enzyme inactivation uh, potential. So the enzymes like lipoprotein lipase gets inactivated when we preheat the milk and this also gives a pasteurization effect. So preheating is something important for us in processing. Now moving on to the very important step in the manufacturing process of our sweetened condensed milk that is addition of sugar. We all know that we add sugar as a means of preservation. What does sugar do? Sugar binds with water. When it binds with water, it makes water unavailable for the microorganism. That is why we use sugar as a preservative. So the quality of sugar which is required in the making of our sweetened condensed milk is that it should have a preservative property but it should not get fermented, that is very important and it should also have the power of inhibiting the growth of microorganism and the flavor should be pleasant, the taste should be uh, ad uh, admirable to the palate of the consumers. Now addition of sugar, so uh, usually what sugar can be considered in making of sweet and condensed milk means sucrose. Sucrose has the quality of the sugar which is desired in making of our sweetened condensed milk. We can also 
think about dextrose but the problem with dextrose is that uh, it tends to easily discolor during storage and also it may lead to age thickening during storage. So sucrose is the most preferred one. Now how much sugar to add? We said the amount of sugar we add should be enough to bind the water which is available for the microorganism so that when sugar binds with the water we make it unavailable for the microorganism. So we have your calculation for it which we call it as sugar ratio. Usually 62.5% sugar ratio is advisable for sweetened condensed milk. When we say 62.5% sugar ratio what we mean that water present in the sweetened condensed milk contains 62.5% sugar. Suppose you have your milk with 30% milk solids. Then what will be the water content in it? 100 minus 30%, 70 parts. So for that 70 part, what is the 62.5% of it will be the sugar which we need to add. So this 62.5% is taken as a thumb rule which usually corresponds to around 40 to 45% of the sucrose in total quantity. Now when do you add the sugar? We can add the sugar at the time of preheating the milk to the fresh milk itself or we can add the sugar when we are going to condense it. So there are two ways in which we can add. Now the disadvantage of adding sugar during the preheating step to the fresh milk is that when we add a sugar in the beginning stage the stability of the milk is lower. The resistance, uh, heat resistance of the microorganism increases when we add sugar in the beginning. Okay, so we usually go to the second method of adding the sugar during the condensing period. So what we do over here, we dissolve sugar in water of around 88 degrees centigrade temperature. Okay, and then we draw this sugar directly into the condensing pan. Now before drawing the sugar into the condensing pan, we need to have your sugar which is of clean nature. If the sugar needs to be sterilized. We need to pass it through a centrifugal clarifier so that any dust or any extraneous material is removed and the, any microflora in the sugar needs to be eliminated. So a high pressure filter is usually involved. Moving on to the heart of our operation that is our evaporation or condensing process. Evaporation refers to the process of heating liquid to the boiling point to remove water as vapor. In our principles of food processing, we have studied in detail about the various methods of evaporation, various evaporator designs available, the batch pan or rising flame or falling flame, the multiple effect evaporator, all that we have studied earlier. So we can use any of these evaporator designs in order to do the evaporation process. Usually we do evaporation under vacuum. Vacuum evaporation is the heart of our milk condensary. Okay, why? The economy of operation, the rapidity of evaporation, protection of milk from heat damage and the finished product is not having any cooked flavor. You all know that milk is a heat sensitive product. It has protein which undergoes a lot of changes when we heat it. The heat damage to the protein is not something desirable. It gives a cooked flavor which makes the finished product not in an acceptable nature. So we prefer heating the milk in vacuum so where the boiling takes place at a lower temperature so that heat damage to the milk is usually prevented when we do uh, this condensation process under vacuum. So here is the working of your vacuum evaporator. The driving force is a heat transfer due to the temperature difference between the steam in the coil and the product in the pan. So this temperature difference allows the water to be removed as vapor. Here we have a multiple effect evaporator which is the most common practice in our food industry now. We have different evaporators working in sequence. So here what happens the vapor from the preceding uh, effect is used to heat up the next effect. So what is the advantage of it? Improved heat transfer is the advantage. Okay. So this already we have studied, so we can just move on. The next important step is striking the batch. Now we are heating up the milk, we are condensing it, we are removing a part of the water from it. So you need to know when to stop. 
So that is striking the batch. The term striking refers to drawing of a sample from the pan and testing it for density. And you all know that density is uh, is directly affected by the temperature of the sample. So when you cool down the milk, the density differs. So usually we take a standard testing temperature of 49 degrees centigrade to check the density of the product. And the density check we can do by different methods. We can judge by appearance. Suppose we are using a batch pan evaporator, then an experienced person working in the industry will be able to just look into the milk and then check whether the desired density is reached. He may look in for the settle down effect of the milk or the glossy and uh, luxury of the milk or how it forms a puddle in the center moving from the periphery towards the center. He can judge by appearance and go by it. But when we use a mechanized system like multiple effect evaporators, we have sampling devices to draw the sample from the evaporators and check for density and we go in for the objective evaluation. We can either use a pycnometer or a hydrometer or a refractometer or a viscometer and go for the density check. Now, when the desired density is reached, we need to finish the batch. What is the meaning of finishing the batch is just stopping the process of condensation. So what is the step we need to follow is that first we need to cut off the steam to the pan, the heating source. The valve and the water line to be closed, vacuum pump to be stopped, vacuum relief valve to be opened and once a vacuum is dissipated, we need to draw the sample from the condensing pan. We need to be prompt in doing this because if we delay the process, the milk can get overheated. Now go for the final standardization. Already we have standardized the milk with the fat and the SNF ratio and we have calculated the sugar ratio and added. So standardization is not much needed, but you need to check for the total solids. And if there is a difference with the legal standards, we need to adjust the total solids. Now coming to homogenization, usually homogenization is not required for sweetened condensed milk because creaming is not a greater problem with our sweetened condensed milk. But nowadays, we prefer a sweetened condensed milk which is less viscous. So in that case, we may go in for homogenization at a lower pressure. Around 2 to 6 megapascal, we can uh, have the pressure and then we can do a homogenization to reduce the difference in the density between the fat and the continuous phase. Now, moving on to the next step, the process of Cooling. The process of cooling is a very important step in the making of our sweetened condensed milk because it is during this cooling process we need to take care of these three points which is listed over there. Formation of large lactose crystals should be avoided and the seeding of lactose is usually done in this cooling stage and we also want uniform crystals to be formed during this cooling process. So cooling process is something very, very important to us. And if we do not cool properly, the product tends to have a darker color during storage. It can also thicken undesirably. So cooling will help in having a uniform texture of the product and it will also affect the, it will also prevent the formation of objectionable uh, texture. Now, during this cooling process, we said that we want the lactose crystals not to grow in size. Okay, so we are going to study in detail about the process of crystallization. Okay, so our objective in the cooling is not to prevent the formation of crystals. We want the crystals to form, but we do not want them to grow larger in size. We want the crystals to be small and uniform in distribution. For this, who is the important constituent responsible for this crystallization? It is our lactose. Now, looking into the solubility of lactose compared to sucrose, lactose has a lower solubility. Its solubility is around um, 18 parts per 100 parts. And we also know that lactose is in two forms, alpha form and beta form. When there is a change in the equilibrium between an alpha lactose and beta lactose, they interchange their forms. Okay. Now, during the process of uh, crystallization, alpha lactose crystallizes first. 
So when alpha lactose crystallizes, what happens? Beta lactose then converts to alpha lactose. So this all takes time. So for lactose to crystallize from a supersaturation state, it takes considerable longer time. Sometimes the higher viscosity of the milk or the total milk solids may retard this process of crystallization. So the lactose may crystallize less and the crystals may grow larger in size. So we, in order to avoid this problem, we go in for mass crystallization. Okay, And this period we call it as forced crystallization period where we promote mass crystallization. So in mass crystallization, what do we do? We maintain a temperature of around 30 to 40 degree and then we give an incentive to the lactose which is present in the milk. So incentive is nothing but the seed lactose which we add. So this seed lactose which we add serves as an incentive and promotes uniform crystallization which happens together once. So giving your product a smooth texture. Now the seed lactose material is usually lactose hydrated and it should be very smaller in size around 10 micron having sharp edges. And we need to sterilize this lactose before adding on because you are adding this lactose after the process of condensation. So if the product is not sterile, it is going to affect the microbial quality of our product. So we go in for sterilization of the lactose and then only we add it. Around 37 to 40 gram of lactose per 100 kg of original fluid milk is usually added as seed lactose. We shouldn't think we need to add huge quantity of lactose. This is just a small incentive adder so that mass crystallization happens. Now when we add this seed lactose, the importance of this lactose molecules to be smaller in size and having sharp edges is that it forms a greater incentive to form crystals of uniform size okay and provide smoother texture and we just can't add the seed lactose directly into the milk. What should we do? We need to dissolve the seed lactose which is already sterilized in a small quantity of sweetened condensed milk and then we need to mix on to the entire batch and keep the milk under agitation for around 60 minutes. This agitation is important because it promotes and increases the rate of crystallization. And it also promotes the active migration of the crystals across the entire batch. And it also brings the temperature of the entire batch to a uniform temperature. Usually the seeding temperature is around 27 to 39 degrees centigrade for cow's milk and 30 to 36 degrees for buffalo's milk. When we go in for a combination of milk, around a temperature of 30 to 40 degrees is advisable. Now, after crystallization is over, we need to cool down the product to 13 to 18 degrees centigrade. And we can use any method of cooling, uh, either by batch method or by continuous flow or by vacuum cooling and anything is okay with it. And after cooling, again the stirring process is continued for around 20 minutes so that the solubility of lactose is maintained. Moving on to the last step packaging. Usually sweetened condensed milk is packed in cans because the product is al already sterilized, it's just the final package. So the cans, the lids should be completely sterilized before packaging. While filling in, we need to fill it to the rim. We need to exclude any oxygen which is present, okay, and then it needs to be tightly sealed. So after we all have automated packaging systems now. After packaging, storage of sweetened condensed milk is important. We cannot store it at a lower temperature. If you store it 0 degree centigrade, then there is going to be sugar sediment. The viscosity of the product is going to be affected. Usually storage at 10 degree centigrade with your humidity below 50%. The air humidity should be below 50% is a preferred method of storing our sweetened condensed milk. So far we have discussed the method of manufacture of sweetened condensed milk. Hope the concepts were clear. Thank you.